What is up YouTube? Four Leaf Cards here. Hey, thanks for clicking. And today we are doing an impossible task. Uh, my friend John over at Wade Boggs Fan has asked us to identify one card. If you had to get rid of all your cards and keep just one, what would it be? And I, I, I think that's an unfair question, John, if you're watching. Because uh, there's no way. I hope it never, I mean, maybe if I got in a bad financial situation, uh, you know, and I needed a, to help my family, I'd, I would do that. But uh, fortunately, I don't see that in the future. Um, so I don't have to make this decision, but it's so, so hard. So I figured, you know what we're going to do? This is going to probably be a little bit of a longer video, but sometimes it's just good to go through your cards. And I have like, I think we have 700,000 cards roughly here. It's kind of like an estimate. And I, I have a couple of boxes. It started off as one kind of like graded box, a uh, tall box. And it's, that's grown to three and I've outgrown that. So I have like, you know, probably five rows of cards that are important to me in one way or another. Um, you know, and I always tell my wife, those are the boxes. Like if I ever just croak, the rest is pretty much junk sweat, junk wax or whatever commons base. Uh, but these boxes here you need to keep or, you know, really not put out in a garage sale. But anyway, so I went through some of those boxes and there's way, <laughs> there's way more than what I'm going to show today. But I picked out some uh, that have some stories that are important to me. And it's interesting. I kind of have them piled up. And um, the ones that I've purchased are very, it's a small stack. And the big stack over here are cards that are tied to somebody else. And again, I always say collect to connect. And for me, I'm the kind of person that I do a lot of different hobbies. I have a lot of different collections. Most people don't know that. But uh, I kind of get into something. I get hot and heavy. And then I leave. I go on to something else and collect something else once I feel I have a good representation of whatever. And for some reason, the cards have stuck. And I believe that's because of the people. So, you know, all you guys that are watching, thank you. You're a part of my collecting story. And again, these, these video responses, we do them, you know, for our friends uh, to be part of their story. And it's, it's really, when I say collect to connect, that to me is the most important part of the hobby. And it's the thing that's kept me in it. I, I mean, I probably would have gotten bored and left, uh, but it's the interactions and the friendships that are important. So I'm going to go over some cards, and I think I've got it figured out which my number one card is. John probably knows this. But anyway, um, there's some cards in here that have made me cry, uh, which is crazy to be so emotional over cards, but uh, that's, that's it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So anyway, here's I'm going to start with ones that I've purchased that I'm kind of attached to, um, but they really have less meaning to me than any of the other ones. But anyway, so I'm going to start off with this one. And again, who wants to just see one card, right? So this is a uh, Greats of the Game uh, Ted Williams card, but it's from the Ted Williams collection. So I think it's just cool to have a Ted Williams card of... Ted, that was in Ted Williams' collection. I mean, that's Ted Williams' card. That's pretty cool. Uh, this one was an emotional one for me. I, I, I wanted it for so long. It's just an absolutely beautiful card, and I was so happy when I got it. Um, it's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the Pee Wee Reese uh, 53 Bowman. That was a big one for me. That was like a big boy card. Uh, actually, this one next one is the first big boy card that I bought. And this may be one of my favorite ones. Uh, I see Dom had that as his favorite one. He did his video in like 40 seconds or something, two VRs. But anyway, um, this was like my first big boy card that I bought. It's, you know, obviously off-centered, whatever, but uh, really good shape. And uh, just, man, when I got this, I just sat and looked at it forever. So this one is, uh, that's a top card for me. One of my top, you know one of my top tens to have all right uh let's do the pack rip ones so i got a couple pack rip cards that i'm pretty attached to that i probably won't sell this one here this was the card i wanted as a kid and when i right got back in i was buying some junk wax and i said you know what? i'm gonna buy some uh 89 fleer and i bought a box and i opened all like all in the hotel one room one night and it was just like a binge it was crazy like i was like what happened to me it was like a, I was like a werewolf or something. I changed into a ripping maniac. None of these in the box. None. Zero. And um, I had since bought another box or two or whatever. And I, I always, whenever I buy a box, I tend to open a pack right out of the gate in the truck. And I 
shit you not, this was in the first pack that I opened, right on the top. And I went right back into the store. I was like, hey, I just ripped this in my truck. And, it, you know, it gave me a top loader and, and whatever. And uh, I pulled another one or two out of that box. It was loaded. So I have a, a couple of these pack pulled uh, Billy Ripkins. And this one was crazy. I just stopped to stretch my legs. And I absolutely love stained glass cards. Uh, I've got quite a collection of those. And uh, this was, I just stopped to stretch my legs, bought one, uh, like a fat pack of uh, Ginter. And I pulled this trout out of, it's numbered out of 25, I think. It doesn't say numbered on there, but there's only 25 of them. And I was like, oh my God. And and I posted it in Walmart. I, I bought it at Walmart. Walmart commented on my video. It was crazy. Um, so that was pretty cool. So I probably won't sell that one. This one. Uh, for a little while there, when I was really ripping, before things got crazy with COVID, uh, my wife was like, you know, what are you doing? I was like, well, let's open some packs together. And she likes uh, Diamond Kings. I don't know if it's the artwork or whatever. And she pulled this, Ted Williams, out of 25. So that was just really cool. She beat me. We, we'd buy like a blaster box and I'd take half the packs and she'd take half the packs. And she beat me on that one. So that's a pretty cool... Uh, thing that connects me to my wife, which is pretty rare, because uh, she normally just thinks I'm a fool. But anyway, uh, the rest of this pile here is all from you guys. I think these are all YouTubers. Pretty sure they're all YouTubers. Um, and this, it's this connect to collect thing, or collect to connect, I said that backwards. But uh, this one here, uh, JT at Triple Crown, he was kind of liquidating his Miggy collection, and I have some other ones too that he gave me, but this one's just pretty neat. Super shiny, got the relic, got the auto, and it's from uh, JT's collection, so so happy to have that one. This one is from uh, Sean Tiford. He We were at the National, and he saw this, and he came up to me. He's like, man, I just bought this, and uh, I feel like this is something that you would want. And I said, absolutely. It wasn't really in my budget, but I had a little cash left and uh, gave that to him. So there's the uh, Bobby Door autograph. Absolutely love it. I mean, that corner is all dinged up, but who, who cares? Beautiful card. So connected me to Sean Tiefert. I just thought that was so nice of him to be like, hey, man, you're, the, you're a Red Sox guy. Do you have it? Do you have that? And I was like, no, man. So grabbed it. Uh, this one was at the National... Um, with uh, Jeremy, IPTTM. I said, man, I'm looking for one of these. And he gave it to me. And he said, here, you get this. And all you have to do at some point is give me something back in return. And so I went out and got him a uh, an Ortiz autograph. And to commemorate that, basically the same card there, I bought this uh, version for me. So he gave me this. And then I gave him basically uh, a signed uh, little... Uh, one like that, and so I, I bought one for myself as well, so I had an Ortiz autograph, so that connects me to Jeremy. This is a story right here. This is <laughs> Stofe. Stofe was online one night, and he's like, oh, you don't know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I had this Mookie Betts, and I got it slabbed, and I don't know, I, whatever. you want. If anybody wants, I mean, I was like, man, I'm a Betts fan. I think, and it's a funny card, too, so like, uh, you know, that connects us, because he's kind of a funny guy, too, and uh, I love my funny cards, and I just thought this was just silly it's a silly card but uh, pretty cool and then he's like okay i'll send it to you and then like he never sent it it was like six months later or something or even longer i don't even know he sent it and it came in the mail and i had i bring everything in i take everything out of the envelopes and i put them all and recycle them and for some reason i must have put it back in the envelope and i don't know if i was trying to save stove's address or something or remember who it was from i don't know how i'd forget but uh the envelope went in the recycling and I was like, wow, where did that Betts card go? I was looking for it. I wanted to check it out again. And uh, it was in the recycling. And, and the recycling was coming like the next day. So I was out there, you know, dumpster diving to get this card back. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You know, Mookie Betts. It's number 50. Number 50. Numbered out of 50. Just a lot of cool things going on. This one made me cry. I don't know why, I just, maybe I was having a day or whatever, but my buddy Scott just gave this to me, and I didn't have any Hank Aarons, really, I'm getting all emotional thinking about it, and I don't, for some reason, I just, it was overwhelming that day, uh, you know, and Hank Aaron, obviously, good player, good card, and he just sent it to me, 
And uh, it, was, it was emotional. That was emotional. Was, thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Beautiful card. Beautiful card. Uh, this one, this is from the National 2 last year, I think. We were at the uh, Misfits house in Mangini. There's another. He gave me a, one of those little stickers, too, I think, or whatever. And he's like, hey, you have this card? And I was like, no, I don't have that card because I don't really do 68. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's growing on me, I guess. But anyway... He's like, you do now. So this is from the Mangini collection. Man, crazy. Here's another one here. I kept a note on this one. What's up, my late night baseball life expert? Thanks again for the cards. Uh, and the Hank Aaron drawing means a lot. Uh, here are a few Red Sox you might enjoy. And he gave me some Red Sox. But man, this thing was in it. I love this picture. Wish the glare wasn't so bad today, but... Uh, it's an autograph, Carlton Fisk. Love the picture. And this is from uh, George at Diamond Yard. Just love it. We are connected, my man. You're welcome for that drawing. Uh, this one, another good story here. This was, uh, I, don't, I don't sell much and I really don't trade much. I give a lot away, but I don't do much. And this is kind of my first trade, I guess, really. It was with uh, Lou Rock TV. And uh, actually, this was in there too. I pulled it out, but I'm going to show it anyway. This is this is his dad would get some in-person autographs, and this was like his last. He was giving them away because obviously he's a Yankees fan. But uh, I think this was the last one from his dad, and he gave it to me. And uh, and uh, along with this Fisk, and I just love it, man. Love it. We're connected. I'll take all your Carlton Fisk and Red Sox autographs you got, buddy, if you're watching. And uh, this is a recent acquisition. A uh, special card for me uh, from a Griffey Jr. Super Collector and friend of mine, uh, Mike over at Sticks and Seams. So I still got the note there. The Grail awaits. Glad I'm the one getting this into your PC, it says. Sticks and Seams. And uh, this one just eluded me. I just never picked it up. Didn't have it as a kid. And uh, needed one. And I was about ready to buy one at the National. And I sent Mike a message. I said, hey, you got any extra of those? I just, I, you know, instead of me buying one at, you know, whatever, I'd rather rather get connected so this one is that's a special one for me uh and some miscellaneous stuff so, uh from my buddy scott you know obviously we're good friends and uh man i consider that guy a brother of mine but he drew us uh, a little picture of wally and i love that i mean scott's just an awesome artist you guys all know that and uh this bad boy a little bit bigger there but uh the old uh bionic ted williams i just love that so those, those are not going anywhere. None of these cards are going anywhere. So thanks, Scott, for that pic those pictures as well. We've got some other stuff of Scott's too, picture-wise, but uh, those, are, those are awesome. And, okay, you guys ready for this? You've stuck with me for long enough if you've been listening to my silly stories. But uh, um, this card is uh, – actually, hold on a second. I'm going to go get two more cards. Uh, okay, I'm back. Um, this is funny uh, – the story gets this gets deeper, but uh, <laughs> so um, this card, the one card, has got quite a story on there because I I've kind of decided to get serious on Wade Boggs. He's my favorite player. I've got Little Leaf uh, kind, of, kind of somewhat brainwashed. <laughs> sorry if if you're listening to this when you're getting older, buddy. I'm sorry, but uh, I had to anyway. Um, so, so Wade Boggs is kind of our guy, and we've met him. We got a ball signed in person for the little guy and uh, just had a great interaction with, with Wade. And um, I kind of decided, okay, I'm going to get a little bit more serious about my Wade Boggs collection and really really try to pick up some more cards and, and you know, whatever I can get of Wade Boggs. And uh, not, not to a, uh, you know, 100%. You know, I still like collecting everything, but... Um, I said, you know what? I gotta get, I gotta be like part of the Wade Boggs uh, fan club here. I need a one on one, and I came out of the national, uh, one of the nationals here, and I was like, okay, I gotta get a one on one, and I found one. It was a, it was a leaf, which is cool because you know I'm for leaf, and it was a green one on one autograph Wade Boggs from Leaf. So it just seemed like, man, that checks all the boxes. That's the one on one I should get, you know, and it's sitting at like eighty bucks, and so I bid on it. And, you know, you see these things selling for crazy money. And I was like, oh, maybe I can get it for 100 bucks or whatever. And I'm watching it. And uh, it just, the last 
you know, these sniper guys that came in and I it just I just watched it and I was watching it, you know, and I, I was like, oh, I'll go 120. And it just kept going and going. And I was like, I don't want it. I want it. I want it. And I bid that thing up. And uh, it was funny because I, I talked to John. I was like, what's going on? Like, who's buying these things? Are you guys getting all crazy about it? And he's like, yeah, there's a couple people that get crazy. And they're like, oh, you must be the guy that was bidding it up. So they're all talking and they're watching these things. So it was funny, but I was just really depressed. It's like, I can't compete with this. You know, people, I mean, Wade Boggs is an easy sign. I mean, you can send him stuff for like 15 bucks or whatever, and he'll sign whatever you want. So 250 bucks or whatever, 180 or whatever. It's crazy for an autograph for Wade Boggs. But anyway, it's like, I got to get this one-on-one. And it was just really, it was kind of a, a funny story that, um, you know, I called John. And I was like, listen, I, you know. I'm looking for a one-on-one, you know, can you guys at least give me a heads up or whatever? He's like, yeah, well, well, I'll see. And I had picked, actually, it's this one. I had come back from the National with this card for Little Leaf because I wanted something shiny because he likes shiny, right? Kids like shiny. I wanted something cool with a bat relic, and it's just a great picture of Boggs. And I had brought him back this from the National. This was like, you know, every year I bring him back like a card or two. And this was the card. And I... Don't know how this happened, but um, basically, here's the card. This card pops up like the next day. It was it was really quick right after I lost that leaf one, and I was like, oh my god, I have to have the card. Like it's just meant to be, right? So I had just brought this home. I was trying to get another one, and this one pops up. So I told John, I was like, listen, I'm going after this, and I'm not sure I how I told the story before, but like there was no amount of money that was going to stop me from getting this card. For some reason, I just felt like I, I forget what I ended up paying. It was a lot of money, 200 and something. And I just, I want to say I had like $600, 500 or $600 in my max bid and you can bid it up all you want, but I didn't think anybody was going to go over 500, um, for that. But, uh, and I told John and I was, you know, on the phone and I mean, when I won it, John was so happy for me, and I was so happy. I mean, I was crying about this card. I just have never been that emotional about a card, and it was just like fate. So, so this, this part, the rest of the story is. I it took me a little while to find this because this sits on uh, Little Leaf's bedstand, which it was not there, and I was like, where the heck did that go? Because. Uh, whatever, but he has taken it off his nightstand and he has like a little treasure chest and <laughs> I'm looking in his room and he had that in his treasure chest and then this one sits on my bedstand. So we have matching cards that sit on our bedstands and every night we say goodnight to Wade Boggs. So <laughs> probably a little crazy, but uh, you know, this, so this is kind of our card. Just so you know, like what, what does the little kid have on their stand? This is another one he had on his nightstand as Andrew Bogarts, but we probably got to switch that out because he's not with us anymore. Um, got rid of them, but anyway, so, so these are the cards that are probably the most important to our family at this point, and this card for sure would be my number one card that will never, ever, ever leave, uh, my collection. The other ones won't either, but I mean, I guess if times got really, really, really hard, and if I, if I had to do that. I hope you guys understand that I would sell your cards, but pro probably not. I'd have to be, like, poor, like, very poor. Um, anyway, so there you go. That's uh, some stories around some cards. Again, collecting co to connect, uh, super important to us here. And uh, Wade Boggs, super important to us. So, John, congratulations on your milestone. Uh, thanks for giving us an impossible task uh, to do. Some people, I guess, are better at it than others, but... Uh, this is our entry here, our one of one Wade Boggs uh, relic autograph. Appreciate you guys watching and spending some time listening to my stories. And uh, thank you all so much for watching my channel. And uh, for all you guys that are, are connected with us, we, we super appreciate it. Just it's, it's the best part of the hobby. So uh, if you guys are open to anything, best of luck to you. Don't forget to collect to connect. That is the most important part and the best part of the hobby. And as always, have an awesome day.